Russell, good morning. Um, I was asked to make a presentation up here. My name is Mohammed Bahus. I'm a plant pathologist. Plant pathologist for vegetable and fruit crops. My job is identify the problem and they worked out a solution, effective solution, and take to the end users. That's what my job is. And I thought this would be on Apple, would be a good idea because we do have Apple trial right there. I mean, if uh, there was a chance to walk there and see the problem, I would be happy to show you. That's what we are here. We do have approximately 100,000 acres of vegetable and fruit crops in Illinois. Average farm gate value is $4,000 per acre, meaning that $400 million. But adding up the agritourism, it tops to about a billion dollars because agritourism is just a very huge in Illinois. With this one, I'm going to go here, common abiotic diseases. Abiotic diseases are because of environmental problem. And occasionally people see the symptoms, the disease, and they spray. We don't need to spray. By spraying, we make the problem worse. This is the one of them. Not every year, but some year shows up. This is the herbicide damage. After July 15th, if anybody using herbicide, particularly Roundup, to kill the weeds on the floor, then it will be stored in the plant because it drifts all over the plant and goes up next to spring. It shows up like this. Practically, there is, there is very little leaf, as you see, both in the apple and the pear. Do not spray that. This is in Honeycrisp. This is Honeycrisp is relatively new. I just brought a, a sample. Uh, over here, and uh, you can look a little later. And this is the green, green leaf, and this is what is what is making it yellow. Don't worry about that. Only, only honeycrisp. Honeycrisp is rel relatively new because of very pricey apple. Don't spray them. We have uh, lots of them. This is what we know so far. Is not a disease. Is not uh, problem because of sugar problem. Honeycrisp, maybe because of the high sugar, this shows up. It does not affect the yield and do not spray, don't get the panic, and that would be okay. And this is winter damage. Winter damage is very common in Illinois, particularly from central Illinois to northern Illinois. For example, in Champaign area, Rockford area, is, uh, toward Chicago, we see a lot particularly new varieties are very sensitive to winter damage. And the people say, oh, could be phytophthora problem, could be canker problem, not really. Winter damage first and followed with others. This is golden delicious. Golden delicious uh, problem leaves get necrotic. This is particularly from Southern Illinois, from here to southern Illinois. I don't see a lot in northern Illinois. I don't mean there is none, but more in southern Illinois. If we go, for example, uh, Union County, almost right now you will see on Golden Delicious, only Golden Delicious, nothing else. Don't worry about that. Probably what we know, this is a zinc-related problem, but nobody has been able to get a solution, application of the zinc or so. This happens, it is not going to be a big deal. Don't worry about that. This is, we have a lots of this one ring spot this year. This is the frost damage. When the fruits are setting, we had a frost like this year, we're going to have ring like this in apple and in the pay. Don't worry about that. You can't correct that and it will go on. Nothing bad, just you can eat them, you can uh, take a juice and so on. These are the, these are, uh, the, these are the abiotic disease, environmental problem. Could be in the home garden, could be in the commercial production. If you have any of this, don't be panic. Don't spray. If you spray, 
not only is not going to be useful, you're killing the beneficial organism. That makes it really worse. Then we go and go, the diseases, what we know, the diseases, very common diseases in Illinois. One is fire blight. We used to have a lot of fire blight, but we are able to do it. We did research, we are in good shape. We do have still fire blight, very little. And we do have a scab. A scab, I'm going to be talking about the scab, the rust, mainly from here to the south, and the sutiblats from spec, fly, blood, fly spec together, goes together. We use that a lot, but not, not anymore. And we do have bigger rot, uh, black rot, and white rot, all three rots. And right now we do have a lots of bitter rot up here. And I'm going to be, I'm going to have this one, which I picked up about an hour ago, right here. Not in our trial, but uh, in the non-sprayed, here it is, typical. Typical rot, start like this, and you are welcome to see after the presentation is over. So let's say fire blight. Fire blight is a bacterial disease. Looks like you put the fire and kill it. It goes very rapidly. If you go, anybody is from Calhoun area at all? In the Calhoun, for example, I used to walk and see black, completely black, not anymore. And we did not know what to do. Right now we know, but you know, Bacterial disease overall needs three factors. One is the opening area to bacteria to get in there. Bacteria is not like fungus, nematode, is not able to get in there until there is an injury or during a bloom, there is opening from the top. And temperature, 65 or 60 plus. Below 60, bacteria cannot do any, anything, really. And the moisture, if we don't have water, the bacteria would not be able to do that. And we understand, right now we have very good uh, uh, control. At silver tip, when the bacteria oozes out, comes out from the, the side, is sleeping during winter, then during the balloon, when the opens the balloon and the bacteria gets in there, and post the balloon when we do have a storm, particularly uh, rainstorm, hailstorm, that makes injury, bacteria is always there, gets in there and makes problem. So what kind of symptoms you see? We may have uh, blossom blight like this, and we very common. This is the shoot blight, mainly, mainly known as a uh, fire blight. And if you, if you see, you want to know whether this is fire blight or something else? Look here. Look here. This is the, like a stake called the shepherd hook. If the, if the end of the infected shoot is just turn, like a U-turn, that's definitely fire blight. Then you have to take care of it. Otherwise, wouldn't that be fire blight? We do have rootstock problem. We do have the sign problem. If we do have susceptible rootstock, bacteria zip goes from the top to the graft area, and that's it. How bad it is? About 15 years ago, roughly by 18 years ago, in southwest of Michigan, the losses for this one estimated $42 million. This is really very serious, but right now in Illinois, we don't have any problem because we know the life cycle of the disease, we know how to take care of it. And here is the fact, prune, winter pruning. Don't worry about contamination. The temperature is so low, bacteria is not going from one branch or one plant to another plant. And then uh, summer, uh, here it is, uh, blight, shoot, and canker. Summer, summertime pruning. If you're pruning in summer, do it when it is sunny. Because it's sunny, there is no moisture bacteria get contaminated. Don't worry about it dipping in alcohol or bleach. Just to make sure that there is no water. Sunny in the afternoon, you can prune them. 
and the grow application of uh, chemical, copper at silver tip. Any kind of copper at silver tip, the baths are silver color. That's the time. Then go to this one, streptomycin. Streptomycin at, uh, during the balloon. We do have a model uh, uh, called Meribolite. We just can download the Meribolite program and just uh, punch it moisture and temperature. It tells us whether it's spray or not spray. Pretty reliable. Particularly, this model was developed in Missouri and Illinois, but released by University of Maryland. That's what it is. Apply streptomycin. This, this is the bactericide. This is the bactericide. The most effective compound against this bacteria. Apply this one after any hail damage or big storm. That's how we, we do. And right now, as I mentioned, this is not really huge still. What is the conclusion? No streptomycin resistant in Illinois, but there is in Oregon, there is in California, Washington, even Michigan. They can't use the streptomycin. We want to preserve using streptomycin. That's what we ask the growers really um, listen to us. No copper resistance in Illinois. Perfect in Illinois. We do have an alternative antibiotic called casagomycin. We worked out that's also effective. Not as effective as streptomycin is, but it is, it is good. In the case we have streptomycin resistant, we will go to casagomycin. Then we're going to fungal disease. Three fungal disease, scap, worldwide huge problem, rust, mainly uh, toward the south a lot, and also uh, powder mildew. Powder mildew is not a big problem. Okay, I got it. And then scap, this is the scap. If somebody wants to be a plant pathologist, come to Illinois. Illinois is perfect for plant pathology and classical symptoms and diseases in Illinois. You see this gap? All of them from Illinois, not, not from somewhere else. And we know that scap fungus survive on the leaves on the ground. That's it. Nothing else. What to do? Go to the cycle, get, the, get rid of the leaves. And what else to do? We do have some resistance to some fungicide. We do apply urea for the LBs to uh, soften the leaves and mold them and then get rid of them. Then after, after season start, this is the one I have been testing in several locations in Illinois. Perfect. Right now it's so good management, I hardly can collect some apples for my class. This is diagnosis class. We have been really uh, uh, successful. Give me another minute. So this is the summer diseases. This is the one I am talking about, bitter rot. Bitter rot in some of the varieties, including, uh, including honey crisp, is terrible. It's terrible. This is the third year we, we're doing uh, some uh, trial up here and very good. Right now we know a new fungicide marijuana plus Capton alternated uh, alternated Topsin M plus Capton or uh, Profite plus Capton. Nothing. For three years we have not seen any of this disease, any symptom in our plots. With this one I bring to the end uh, all I can say, if you want to be successful, know your disease cycle. Without knowing your disease cycle, you cannot do much uh, uh, success and integrate disease management. Do, we do not rely on just one method. With this one, you're welcome to ask me a question about apple diseases or vegetable diseases, about tomatoes, about the basil, or whatever you want. Thank you so much.